Hi, welcome to another video. So, I cover a ton of AI coders, but I don't use all of them in my regular workflows because that's impossible to do. That's why I thought I'd tell you guys about how I do AI coding these days, how I take an idea to an app in my own workflow, what tools I really use, and which models I use for most of the tasks. So, let me just give you an overview of the things that I use, and then I'll show them to you in action. Let's talk about how I brainstorm an idea and take an idea even into production. So, let's say that I have an idea of creating an app to manage my benchmarks. If you don't know, I do a bunch of LLM testing, and I just use Google Sheets for it, which is not as intuitive. That's why I was thinking of making an app that could allow me to manage the tests easily, and I could just copy the responses or fetch answers for questions from the model's API, and then view the responses by clicking the model name, and then view the answers to each question through it. Now, we can achieve this by prompting the model, but it will take a lot of time, and the code will not be to the point. So, what I do is that I just make a super basic mock-up of what I want. You can either use Figma for this, or Excaladraw should also work fine. Now just go ahead and create one, and then you can just ask ChatGPT to convert this image into a better-looking UI variant of it. I have covered the prompts and stuff that I used to do this in the GPT-4.0 designer video if you'd like to see that. So, just do that. Now comes the major stuff, and that is what do I use as my AI coder, and what model do I use? Well, let's start with the model. So, for the model, I am currently mainly using Gemini 2.5 Pro because it is super cheap when compared to something like Sonnet. The pricing for it only costs about $10 for output, which is pretty high when compared to something like DeepSeek. But still, it's good and it is also better. And you also don't pay for thinking tokens in this, which is kind of awesome. And it even has a 1 million token context window. It is also free with very high rate limits, if you wish to use that. But another thing that I have been doing is that I also use DeepSeek V3 for tasks that are simple, as that helps me save some money with it. And I also try to keep using the newer models as well. Now, the issue is that if you use multiple models, then configuring each model's API key and then adding credits to each model is super tedious. And if I stop using a model, then my credits get stuck and whatnot. So, I was using Open Router to tackle this. However, I have now shifted to Requesty for this due to multiple reasons. I shifted to it at first because it gives you a $1 credit when you sign up, which you can use for any model. And if you top up with more than $5, then you get $5 extra, which is kind of awesome. So, that's why I came here. But then I got hooked on some of its great features. Some of those reasons are that it integrates a bit more seamlessly into RuCode which is what I majorly use for coding. You can basically just hit the requesty option when you initialize RuCode and just authorize it with your requesty account and you're good to go. Secondly, the dashboard of theirs is better and gives a bit more in-depth stuff to me, like it tells me which model was slow, which was fast, which coding language I majorly used, and everything like that. But, what I majorly use it for is the API key-based settings features. So, each API key that you create in Requesty gives you the option to do some cool stuff. First of all, there's the logging feature, which I use for some applications which are public, and I want to monitor if nothing fishy is going on, as it allows me to log the whole input and output data, and it also allows me to fine-tune smaller local models by just extracting this data and then fine-tuning it. It also shows me the usage per key, which allows me to bifurcate keys 
between multiple applications that I use, like Bolt DIY, Klein, and RuCode, and my custom applications, and I can see which thing consumed most of my tokens. Another thing that I had set up when I was using the Rate Limited Gemini 2.5 Pro was that in the policy, you can set the fallback models here in a chain, which means that if the model you selected fails, then it will move on to the fallback model and fulfill the request. I currently even use it for 2.5 Pro because what I do is that I keep the free Gemini 2.5 Pro endpoint as the main one and then put the not free one as a fallback, which helps me save a ton of money, which is kind of cool for sure. But that's not all the features I use here because if we navigate to the features option, then here you'll see some options. And one option is to set a custom prompt. The custom prompt allows you to add a custom system prompt to every request that is made through this API key, which means that you can replace root codes or clients or anything that uses this API key system prompt to anything like that. And they even have their own pre-built versions of system prompts for root code that makes it perform even better. You can see that this is Gosu Coder's system prompt, which automatically replaces the RuCode system prompt for code generation that nets about 90% token savings, which is insane. I actually use this Gosu Coder one, and what it does is that it limits RuCode to only output majorly code without a bunch of gibberish, which takes up a bunch of tokens, and also optimizes RuCode system prompt for less text. There's also another variant, and both perform similarly. I prefer the Gosu Coder option. Some more stuff is the option to remove MCP prompt, which will get you about 30% token savings and 10% token saving accordingly, which is kind of awesome. You can also change system prompts for literally any app that you use because it overrides the request itself which is kind of awesome. I am using it majorly due to these reasons, and it has all the models that I use, and these features are technically free because you are anyway paying for the API, and it really helps to save on token costs. Plus, the $5 free credit that you get with it is also amazing. Also, the cash for the models breaks here less often which is another thing that helps you save some money. Anyway, now let's come to how I use it in RuCode. So, I generally have RuCode set up simply. I just have a profile in the settings where I choose Requesty as the provider, and then I just select the model I want to use, which is generally Gemini 2.5 Pro Free, and I have fallback models in Requesty set as Gemini 2.5 Pro Paid Version and then DeepSeek V3. I also sometimes use DeepSeek V3 as the main thing, but it doesn't have vision capabilities, and it limits me sometimes. But I do use it for edits and refactoring after a bit. Anyway, now, since I'm telling you the whole workflow, then it makes sense to tell you how I initialize the projects. So, I generally make Next.js apps but I also sometimes make Expo mobile apps. Expo is simple, as there's just the basic Expo starter kit that I use, while for Next.js, it's a bit complicated. So, you can use the default Create Next app, or do what I do, which is to use the T3 stack. I use T3 stack because it has type safety built in and comes with TRPC, which is what I also use. So, this is handy for me, as I also code myself manually and not just depend on AI fully. But if you are a vibe coder, then basic Next.js app should also work fine. Anyway, just go ahead and get the project set up, and then we can now start with the stuff. So, the prompt for the start is generally to get rid of the pre-built pages and just keep the main homepage and remove all elements from it and change the title of the project wherever mentioned to the name that I want, which is King Bench. 
Once we do that, you'll see that it starts working on it immediately, and then in just a bit that is also done. I recommend doing this because it makes the code quite easy to navigate for both my eyes and for the AI as well. Anyway, now, let's go ahead, and now we'll give it the image that we have generated, and now you just need to ask it to replicate this, and it will just do that in a bit. And Gemini 2.5 Pro is actually great. So, it's now done, and if we run it, then you can see that it has replicated it here pretty well. Now, this is obviously just the start, and you would have to keep going on with the prompting to get it done, and you would also need to do some coding yourself as well at multiple times, and I'd still recommend you learn the programming language that you're using, whether it be React or Flutter, or whatever that you want to use. It is contrary to many guys saying that you don't need it, but I believe currently you do, and you can get nowhere with just AI, as you need to have at least basic knowledge about programming to know that it hasn't done something blatantly wrong. So, there's that. Also, I majorly use Supabase as the database and auth. You can also use Firebase, and to implement it, just ask RuCode, and it will ask you for some details like endpoint and keys. Just give it that, and it will get that configured. It is really great. Also, for MCP servers, I generally only use the fetch tool and serper search tool, as that makes it supremely capable in searching for new libraries, documentation, and stuff. And the fetch serper can also scrape pages, which is also great. That's majorly what I use for most of my tasks. I don't use Bolt DIY and stuff anymore because it's not as good, and RuCode is enough for me. For the autocomplete, I use Kodium, which is fine. And also, if you're wondering that I don't use Windsurf or Cursor, then I majorly don't. Because the models are very much truncated in there, and the models don't perform well, and I can't configure as much stuff that I can do with RuCode, or even Klein for that matter. So, if you want, then you can use it. I don't. Anyway, that's majorly about it. Most of the stuff that I have showed you have free tiers, which many of the students who watch my channel would like. Requesty is also cool, and I think that it also brings a ton of more cool features. Let me know what you guys use, and how you are using the stuff these days. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!